Tascam recently came out with this. This is the DR70D audio recorder. It's got four XLR inputs and it can record four individual tracks. What's really significant about it is that it only costs $299, which is very cheap for a recorder like this that can mount under your camera or also easily slide into your audio bag. So since this was designed for video production, the question is, what can it really do for you in a meaningful way to help you with your videos? Well, let's try and figure that out right now. Okay, before we get too deep into this, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the name. Tascam DR70D Linear PCM Recorder for DSLR. Linear PCM, I don't know what that means. For DSLR, okay, yeah, you can use this with a DSLR, but you can also use it with a mirrorless camera, you can use it with an audio bag, you can do all kinds of things with this. Most importantly, let's look at this. DR70D, now that's cute. Tascam named this after a camera because Canon has a video focused DSLR called the 70D. Okay, so I thought for a minute, it might be kind of cute. Let me see if I can get a 70D Canon so I can shoot my video about the Tascam 70D. The problem is the Canon 70D doesn't have a headphone output. And one of the cool things about the Tascam 70D is that it has features for cameras that have headphone outputs. So if you're gonna use a Tascam 70D, it's best not to use a Canon 70D because you won't be able to use all of the features there. Anyway, my point is Tascam, please stop naming your products after cameras. All right, so let's, let's talk about the recorder a bit. You hold this down, it takes about four or five seconds for it to power up. Uh, there's been people complaining that that takes too long, but I think Tascam did that on purpose so you don't accidentally turn it on and off when you're using it. So this is the DR70D. Before this, Tascam had come out with the DR60D, which was only two channels, and it was much fatter and taller. So it was a bit chunkier to put it on a camera, and it was a little too chunky to fit in my audio bag, so I never bought one of those. But the second that this came out, I was like, all right, I gotta get that thing. One of the reasons I really wanted this was that it has these two built-in microphones on the back, and that's great because Sometimes you just want mics built into your recorder. It's a good thing. The Tascam DR60D didn't have this, uh, nor did the Mark II, the second version of it, but this one does. And they sound pretty okay. Another thing we wanna look at here, it's got camera in and out. This is for connecting your DR70D to your camera so you can listen to the sound inside of the camera as you're recording into the recorder. Why would you wanna do that? I'm gonna try and explain that to you in this video. It's a little complicated, but we'll get, we'll get to that. Another nice feature on here, it's got the slate button. So when you press that, it sends sound out of the recorder like a boop. And that helps you mark up uh, recordings in post-production. You'll see like in your sound waves, this clear spike where that thing happens and you'll know that that's a marker. All right, so Tascam calls this thing the DR70D recorder for DSLR, but I think this really appeals to two different kinds of people. It's for people who are shooting video with DSLR cameras, also with mirrorless cameras, or even traditional video cameras. This will also appeal to people who are trying to become professional sound people. If you're trying to do location sound for a living and you can't yet afford a sound device or a Zaxcom recorder, spending $300 for this to put in your bag is a pretty good place to start. This isn't where you wanna be when you're like doing professional jobs for like real productions and you're making real money. Um, but if you're just starting out, this is a very good choice for you, I think. One thing I wanna talk about functionally with this recorder Basically, there are three different modes that it operates in. There is stereo mode, there is mono mode, and there is mix mode. Um, what that means, it, if you have it in stereo mode, it records two stereo tracks, okay? If you have it in mono mode, it records four individual tracks if you want it to, or one individual track, two, three, four, okay? And then mix mode, it records a single stereo track, but it uses all of the inputs that it has 
and it mixes those down into two. So that's why that's called mix. It also has a neat trick up its sleeve where you can make a dual recording. If you're only creating a single stereo track, it can make two of those. One at the levels that you set to record at and a second one at a lower level. So if you're, say, recording dialogue in a scene and one of the actors just starts screaming really loud and they get very into the scene and it blows out your audio because they just spiked their volume, the second backup recording is going to be set at a lower level by default. So if your first level spikes and distorts, you have a second backup that won't distort. So that's what that is. But that's only when you're set to record a single stereo track. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, hey, what's a stereo track, dude? Well, your camera, most cameras record a single stereo track. That's why when you bring your footage into post-production, you have like that, you know, stereo file there and you can cut that up and manipulate it and all sorts of things. So here we have the Tascam DR70D mounted to a Canon 7D Mark II. And you'll notice here I've got these funky wires on the side. Okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm utilizing the camera in and out feature on the Tascam DR70D. Um, yeah, so why would you do this? Great question. So say you're recording a shoot. Um, say you've got like a few wireless microphones plugged in here and you've got a shotgun microphone plugged into here and um, you want to record that obviously into the Tascam DR70D but it also doesn't hurt to make a backup recording in your camera. So um, why would you do that? Why wouldn't you just use the built-in microphone on the camera or why wouldn't you just put like this shotgun microphone and plug that directly into your camera so you have separate audio. You have this audio here, you have this audio here. You can do that. If that's what you want to do, go for it. But what this does is it gives you options. So say you want to record all of your microphones into the Tascam DR70D. You can utilize these to make a backup second copy of that audio in the camera itself. This can be useful if, say, something goes wrong with the Tascam DR70D. Maybe a file gets corrupted. Maybe your SD card has a problem. Who knows? If something goes bad in the recorder, if you make a copy of the same audio in the camera, that might save the day. Say you're recording a long take, okay? And you're recording into the DR70D and you're also recording into the attached camera. You can plug your headphones in here on the Tascam DR70D and as you're rolling, if it's a long take or whatever it might be, you can check what things sound like in the recorder but also in the camera. So you can just be confident that things are going well. So let's review. You have your headphones plugged into the DR70D. You have all of your microphones plugged into the 70D. Your camera is also getting audio sent to it from the DR70D. So you're recording a backup copy of the audio in the camera and you're recording what you want in the DR70D. As you're rolling, you can listen to headphones and monitor the sound that the DR70D is recording. And you can also go in here and say, all right, I want to listen to what's going on in the camera. So instead of unplugging your headphones here and plugging them into the camera, which would make like clicky clicky noises, and it also would vibrate the camera because you're like, you know, plugging stuff into it. You can just kind of go in here and say, all right, I'm listening to the audio on the DR70D, everything sounds good, but is the camera okay? Is the camera recording good audio? Ah, let me go in and change the monitor. 
So now I can change from listening to the audio that's being recorded in here and listen to the audio that's being recorded into here. And I can be like, ah, yes, the audio sounds good in the camera and in the DR70D. Everything is wonderful. You also may notice like, oh, one of them sounds messed up. Let me resolve this issue. It's always good to use headphones when you're recording a video. Always, always, always. Here's another scenario. Say, you know, you don't want to record the exact same audio in both things. Say you have like a bunch of microphones plugged into the DR7DD and you know, you're like, you know what? I want my stereo on camera microphone only to plug into the camera. That's all I want to capture there. So you can do that. You can have your on-camera microphone plugged directly into your camera, and that's what your camera records. And then you can have all of your other stuff plugged into the DR70D, and it's going to record all of that stuff. You can still utilize this headphone monitor situation and be able to switch on the DR70D and be like, all right, let me listen to what everything sounds like on the DR70D. All right, everything sounds good. But you know, let me make sure that my, my on-camera microphone is recording properly into the camera still. Like sometimes the connection might get messed up. Sometimes the battery might die. Who knows what the problem is. You can go in and if you have these monitor cables plugged up, you can go in and change what you're listening to on the DR70D and yeah, be able to tell if everything's cool. Eh? Eh? Hmm? You might not use this. I, I, I feel like this kind of thing is for kind of an advanced user, but you know, there's going to be plenty of advanced people that never touch this, but you know, maybe you do touch it. Maybe you do get into it. I don't know. This kind of monitoring situation, I feel like better suits the person who's using the DR70D um, as a sound person with a sound bag. Because when you're doing that, you want to record your own audio in your sound bag, but then you want to send a line out to the camera and plug into the camera that's being used so you can feed the camera audio. So that way, you know, you're recording in your bag and then you're recording on the camera. And if, if that's the situation, if, if it's an audio person, they're definitely going to want to go in and listen to what the camera sounds like. If they're sending audio to a camera, they're going to want this monitoring functionality. So maybe, maybe this audio stuff is better for people who are getting into the audio side of things. But you know, if you're just a solo video shooter or a small crew and you don't have a sound person, you still might get into using that. Eh, I don't know. A quick, quick little note about this. If you're using the DR70D and you're recording, say, four individual tracks, you have it set in mono mode, say you have a couple wireless mics plugged in there, maybe a shotgun microphone, maybe a hypercardioid microphone, say you've got a couple tracks going on, right? Or three or four tracks that you're recording here and you're utilizing these output cables. Remember, if you're making a backup copy of the audio in your camera, it's only two tracks because cameras only record stereo tracks, two channels. So if you're recording three or four channels in your Tascam DR70D and you use these output cables, you're not going to get three or four channels in your camera. You're going to get a mix, a stereo mix into your camera and your camera is going to record at a lower resolution and a lo lower bit depth than you can record with the DR70D. So when you make a backup copy of the audio in the camera, it's not the same thing. It's a mix of whatever you do in here recorded into here and it's probably a lower resolution. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're making a backup copy, they're not equal but you can still record good sound into your camera if you do this. So it's worth doing, perhaps for you, maybe. Try it out. Ignore it. Whatever you want to do, do it. 
Tascam DR70D, okay? So it does lots of stuff. It's got built-in mics, it can record four tracks, it can mount to the bottom of your camera. But the question is, do you want this? Or do you want one of these? Zoom H4n, Tascam D40. What are these things? Zoom H5? These things fit in your hands, you know, you can figure out a way to mount these on your camera. You can slip them in your pocket. You can put them in your bag. You can do stuff with these, right? So do you get one of these? Do you get this? It depends. Whatever you want to do is what you should do. They're all pretty good. You can make it work. This is nice that it mounts to the bottom of your camera. But it's a little bit big, you know? This, this is a substantial thing. You can't really mount these to your camera without like little arms and little shoes and all sorts of, you have to think more with these. But this thing is also kind of big. So it depends, it depends. It's cool though, they're all cool. I like, I like everything. Is this what you want? You know, the DR70D mounts a little bit easier, but you know, this is pretty heavy right here. You know, a lot of stuff on the front. This is the Revo S1000 something. This is the same thing as the Opteca. This is like a cheap rig that a lot of people sell by different brands. And you know, it's cheap. But this is kind of like beefy. This is like heavy. It can be done, but it's not perfect. What is perfect? Nothing. Maybe there's something. Cookies. So yeah, it gets a little top heavy if you've got the Tascam DR70D mounted underneath your camera. Uh, but one thing I tried out, I was like, hey, Let's put it on the back. So I have this little spigot. It's this little screw that you can buy to put on your Opteca or whatever this thing is, Revo. And now my DR70D is kind of acting like a counterweight. See, it's in the back. Yeah, and there's more you can do back here. Let's talk about that. Bust out a screwdriver, get that going on. And look at this. A little bracket that comes with the DR70D, which allows you to mount it to your camera, comes off, right? And what's underneath there? Oh, look at that. It's another shoe mount. So you can mount another wireless receiver back here. Look at that, huh? So now I've got a few of these things going on. Got one up here, one up here. So I could have two wireless mics. I could be shooting, shooting. I could listen to everything on my headphones if I had those. Shotgun mic going into the camera right now. I could easily send that back, plug it in here. I could have these two little mics going on my shoulder. Okay, a couple pointers of note on the Tascam DR70D. On the side here, it's got external in one too. So you can plug in a mini plug microphone like the Rode VideoMic Pro, plug it in right there. And you can use that in conjunction with the inputs or the built-in mics on the DR70D. I believe when you use External input one, two, this little mini plug input, that consumes two channels. So you're only gonna have two left after that. You can use two mics and that, or two built-in mics and that. USB connection here, that's for connecting this to your computer to output the files to your computer. It is also used to power the unit you can buy a little battery pack thing and power it that way. The door in the back pops off. Everyone complains about it, whatever. 
it's 300 bucks. Not so bad. Batteries and card go back there. All of the XLR inputs are combos, so you can plug a quarter inch or an XLR into that jack on all four of them. There's three on this side, one on that side. Crazy, but you gotta love it. On the front, there are not very many knobs and buttons which is great because you look at it and you're like, hey, that thing doesn't look too complicated. Maybe even I can use it. Yes and no. The problem is you end up with lots of menus that you have to do things in. So for example, if you want to turn on the phantom power, that is done through menus, not through a dedicated button or switch. But you can individually turn on the phantom power on each of the channels, so that's good. You just got to do it through the menus. There is a tripod mount on the bottom so you can sandwich it between your camera and your tripod. That's probably like one of the best ways to use this thing. You could also put it in an audio bag, have your audio bag sitting on the ground next to your tripod. Maybe it's a backpack. Maybe it's not an audio bag. Maybe you're like, you know, trying to be low profile. Cool, you can do that, you know. Send the output cable, get an extra long six foot mini plug cable, plug it into your camera. Get two copies of the audio that way, one in your backpack, one in the camera, or maybe you don't do that at all. I don't know, it's up to you. Whatever you wanna do. Hey, it's your world, you know? What matters is a story, right? None of this. Tell me a story. Tascam DR70D. Is it the greatest thing ever? Maybe. Maybe not, but it's all right. Thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you want to hear what this sounds like, you're gonna have to watch another video, sorry. I did a shootout video, or I'm planning to do a shootout video where you're gonna hear the Tascam DR70D go neck and neck in a comparison with the Zoom H4n and the Tascam DR40, because those are the recorders that I have. So you can check out that video. You're gonna to listen to how the onboard microphones sound. You'll listen to how they sound with external microphones like the Rode NTG3 and NTG2. And you're gonna hear that in here and you're gonna hear that in the H4n and you're gonna go, hmm, those sound pretty okay. Please read my blog post on the Tascam DR70D. I go into greater detail and I'm perhaps a bit more serious than I was in this video. So there's a lot of information there. More detail than I got to in the video is in the blog post. So check the description, click on the blog post, look at the pretty pictures that I took of it and read the article. There's links in there to buy everything. You can buy the DR70D, you can buy the shoulder rig thing, you can buy the little spigots to attach the Sennheiser receivers to the little shoulder thing and have everything going. It's all in the blog post, so check that out, sammallory.com. And yeah, uh, if you like the video, subscribe. I hope to do more. Um, but yeah, thank you so much. Subscribe, leave a comment, like, like it. Uh, thank you. Standing in the living room talking to my tripod. Yeah.